Right, so today we're going to be talking about using Git to collaborate with people. So to do that, I need to go over a couple concepts that are central to Git, um, central to version control systems in general. Uh, the first one being the ideas of branches. Um, so before we were doing a commit, then another commit, and another commit, and another commit, and just kind of having them open a line like that. It's useful sometimes to be able to develop things in parallel. Um, okay. You have a GitHub account? Yeah. Okay. One reason to be working on things in parallel is if multiple people are doing them. The other thing is if you really do have distinct projects and you're multitasking. So the way the, the way by convention you just get is that you have what's called a branch uh, named master that has your normal commits that just go in a line. When you're working on something, you make another branch. And you can think of these as, they're called branches because the commits uh, can divide up. You can go different, uh, you can go, you can take the same commit and go multiple lines of development. And, okay. so, when you, every time you run git status, that I was used last time. Alright, get status. Every time you ran, it tells you what branch you were on. Which by default is master. So, as of right now, I'm just going to toy with, uh, just going to toy with different, uh, different branches in git log see the list of commits that were made. I'll do this a little more concisely. Has everyone found the finance folder that they made before? And able to get, run git log in it? Has anyone deleted that? Deleted what? Finance folder from the last time. You doing okay, Alex? I, I wasn't here last time, so I'm just, oh, I guess I'm here before I... I forgot. Okay. <coughs> it's, I... So this is a... Yeah, I'm just going to absorb what I can. Okay. It's all, <laughs> yeah, it's all online, so... Yeah. Okay. Are you in the full loop yet? I'm, I'm doing that. Okay. <coughs> um, so... Git log online shows you all the changes that you've made, all the commits that you've made. Decorative. Decorative is a nice option to tell you other ways to refer to those commits. Um, in this case, head, which I described last time as the newest commit, is this last one. Master is the name of the branch, and that's also at that commit. So we're messing around with making other branches that can have other lines of development rather than just like linear progression. So have you found it at DTF? Yeah. And you guys are in the Okay. Cool. So let's start with making a branch. Um, for some new changes, let's say, so what do we have now? We have two, two files, both of them are a list of notes on why, uh, on reasons to, <coughs> to not go to a planet by various monsters. So let's say we change this, um, 
we, we make some big change we, where instead of being a list like this, we put number one, blah, number two, blah, number three, blah. Okay? We could make that one commit. But just for the sake of um, demonstrating branches. I'll create a new branch for this. So convert to number list. These are really long. That creates a branch. If we run git status, we're still on the master branch. But if we do git log again, and we have it show us uh, the branches, and we spell things right, decorative. You mean decorative? Oh, decorative. Then, so both master branch and convert to numbered list branch refer to that. Refer to that newest commit. Git checkout allows us to change what branch we're on. So what happened? What happened with this? So all the, when you created the branch, all that did was give another reference to this start notes on Venus. So so there's. Actually, three ways to refer to it: head master and convert to numbered list. Master and convert to numbered list um, as branches. If you commit to one of the branches, the list will go, or the list of commits will go up, and whatever branch you're on will change with the commits you do. <coughs> so right now, very little has happened. I think 40, 40 bytes are written. Make a new branch. So if we do the name of the branch to switch to, and then get status, well, both of these indicate that we switched the uh, switched the branch. The only difference now. When we make a commit. So I'm going to edit the files. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think there was another one here. So, okay, quiz. How do I see what the changes were? If I do git status, I can see I modified two things. Yes. So git diff shows me that I deleted these three lines, added these three lines, deleted this line, added that line. So, to do a commit, I have to stage the files by doing git add. And then use git commits to actually do the, do the commits. Uh, change planet notes to numbers list. Okay. And nano, press control X to exit. Save the changes. Just enter for the name. Okay. If we go to git log, there's nothing out of the ordinary. The commits have happened and the newest commit is there. If we look at the names, I would refer to them. See, the master branch is still on the commit that it was before. And this branch that we're on has now added a new commit. We can switch between branches with checkout. So like we switch to the converted to numbered list. So if we go to master and do git log, well, git log one line, we no longer see that commit. Likewise, you can see that the head is now changed to do whatever is the most recent commit in your branch. 
a graphical way of looking at this? Well, first let me show all the commits. And then a graphical way of looking at this. Actually, it doesn't look. Okay, the gra graphical way doesn't help too much here because this is a really simple progression. But when you have more, kind of, when the master starts getting other commits and your branches start doing independent commits, um, the graph can kind of look a bit interesting. As you can see the commits branch off from wherever the common ancestor was. So, like I said before, you can go back in time, check out previous commits. It actually tells you um, check out slash p makes a new branch. But it actually tells you if you want to save the history of the commits you do on top of what you're doing in the history, you can make a new branch for that. So, I won't do that for now. So I'll go back to I'll go back to master. Get status just to make sure everything's good. So one way to think of this, or an example on one of the websites I, 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 I um, cite in the links, is you have a text file that says you're, um, it says you're better than your boss, and then you have a boss branch, where you change the text file to say your, um, your boss is better than you. You can switch between them as the situation requires. Um, you can think of it like that, the, um, and you can make commits on top of either version, and you can branch off from any version. Um, so it's kind of like it's kind of like the commits form a tree instead of a line. They're not really a tree because Git has a powerful capability uh, convert to number list long. Name. Git has a powerful capability to merge other branches. So I'm in the master branch, and I take whatever commits were in convert to numbered list, and I merge them. And it tells you what's changed. It tells you what commit it went from and to. So you can work on you can work on something that you know will take you a couple days, and every once in a while remember, and every once in a while think, hey, I should probably fix the typos in the documentation. You can use branches to keep your work in progress separate from the main body of work. Log, decorates, one line, see everything is now. That commits. And just for completeness, I can delete the branch if I'm not going to use it anymore. But I, or I can still commit to it um, after merging. What questions do people have about branches? What is the decorate command? The decorate, it tells you different ways that uh, commits can be referred to. Um, so they can be referred to by, the, by what branch is at that commit. The last, the, the one you're currently on is referred to as head. Um, there's other ways that uh, you can attach a special name to it. All decorated doing 
here just adding this stuff in parentheses. use GitHub and you're gonna share a repository with someone else in the workshop. So given that there's an odd number of you guys who have used Git or who was here last time, I assume Alex you're okay just watching Cody. Okay. How oh, okay. Then I guess you two the DT of Cody, Kevin me. So, <laughs> so you have a repository, you can do work on it, you can do commits on it, you can even do like parallel development on it and put your changes in the main body of um, work, whether it's your thesis or your code or whatever. Um, if you want someone else to be able to do that, at the very least, if the repository is on your computer, your computer would need to be on. But Git is a little more flexible than that. Um, if if ET and Cody, you both agree to um, put your changes in the same repository on some other computer, say that GitHub has, or GitLabs, or um, even SourceForge, as bad as they are, uh, you can put code on there. If you both agree to use that Git repository as well as your own, um, then you can collaborate that way. So for this tutorial, we're making a repository on GitHub, interacting between the one on the repository on your computer with the one on GitHub, even as other people are interacting with the one on GitHub. So maybe that was a little long-winded. But we'll walk through it. So this is what github.com looks for me. So what we're going to do is have one of the partners. So me or you, Kevin? Up to you. OK. Um, you can. Go ahead. OK. You should probably do it so we can see. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's the part that he does. So one of them, in the upper right there, there's a little plus button, the new repository. Hopefully the two of you are inside. Okay. And then whatever you want to call it, whatever you, however you want to describe it, that's group O for workshop. Uh, if you do private, this is actually GitHub's business model, is to charge you for doing private. If, you have a, if you're a student, you get five private repositories you can use. And the prices are somewhat reasonable. Um, but yeah, ju just choose public for now. Hopefully you didn't put your password in files. <laughs> and then leave all this blank. Okay. Now it gives a lot of nice information about what to do from here. <coughs> if you have a new repository, okay, follow that. We're gonna go with an existing one. So the first command so, so this is something that whoever signed up for the, whoever signed up for it, put in. Actually, both people put this in. It's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to do it for a second. So what is this? Git remote, actually, it's copy paste. Track of 
uh, other computers and other, even other places on the local computer where there's Git repositories that you want to interact with. So running git remote-v tells you what repositories um, this git repository knows about. For everyone else, your, the address should be different. Um, so make sure you use the one that your partner used. If, you're, if you didn't create the repository. Okay. Also, okay, for the two people who did this, right, do you have HTTPS or do you have git colon? Yeah. Okay. The git colon is a um, <laughs> git colon is if you want to do a more secure way of accessing it, which takes a more setup than we can do here. Alright. So there is this empty repository on GitHub's computer. Your repository now knows how to access it. Hopefully, Cody looks a little frustrated back there. Not because of that. Okay. So, if you want to take your local repository and tell the one on GitHub, like what commits to use, it's git push. Specifically, if you copy paste the command they give you, and I think almost an identical one is in the notes. So what's going on is that it called um, it called the website Origin. So that's its name for this website or this place that has a Git repository. And by doing Git push, you're pushing the repository that on your computer onto the one on the internet. Center. Should I see your credentials? Does this have an issue with two factor authentication? Yes. You turn that on? I always have it on. Okay, that is good. So in the settings, in GitHub, in the settings, you have to do a personal password. Yeah, I forget what it's called personal activity, something. I, I just had to do that. That's why I copy pasted it. Yeah, so if you really want to be secure about it, uh, two-factor authentication is one thing, and using public key encryption is the other. Um, so personally, I use public key encryption. Yeah. Your personal access token to the settings. So if you use two-factor authentication, that means your username and password is not alone. So it is not all you need to authenticate you. You also need a um, your phone or some other device that you've already decided you trusted before. So that's a security thing. Useful security thing. So you guys successfully pushed? Nice. So once you push this empty this this page for the empty repository now changes to whatever you put in the repository. If you refresh. GitHub is actually a pretty nice way of looking at your repository. If you click commits, you get something that's sort of like git log, um, but you can click any individual one to see what happened in that, in that commit. Um, Shows the number of branches, let you switch, switch between viewing them. And quite a bit. So now what we're going to do is share the code, or share access to the repository with someone else here. In GitHub, you can do that by hitting settings and collaborators. 
because it wants my password. Oh, yeah, not that password. Sorry, yeah, so settings for the repository and then um, collaborate. Just Kevin K H U. Kevin K H U. Kevin K H U. H U. Yes. Okay. Is that the default symbol or is that your symbol? That's the default symbol. Yeah, so, so that, that kind of a kind of a nice thing about what, what really uh, pulls you into GitHub, even though you don't need it to use Git, is um, it, the fact that it's something of a social network. Oh, okay. <laughs> so for the people. For the people who added, or for the people who made the repository and put it on GitHub, Git poll will grab whatever changes. Git poll origin master will be more explicit what website and what um, branch you met. The fact that when you do Git push dash u, the dash u makes it the default. We get pull. Um, so that, that would be important in a sec. But for whatever reason, that was in the notes at the end here. So, let's talk about the other people. We've added each other as a collaborator. Now, I don't remember your name. Michael. Michael. Okay. Michael and Aditya and Kevin, you guys have to go into a directory, a different folder that does not have a folder called planets. So for instance, slash TMP probably doesn't. Um, or you can make a new uh, workshop stuff. You can make a new folder. Doesn't matter. Just go to some folder that doesn't have a folder called plants. Uh, I know. That was like, that is what my text key. So, to, if you don't want to. You know my username. Uh -huh. You hopefully Mike yeah, Cole. Hopefully knows. Um, oh. Tim. Okay. Yeah, I can share mine. That's right. Okay. Okay. You hopefully knows Tim's username. Aditya, you need Cody's username. So you want to get. So you just want to get your partners get Oh, there we go. So get the clone, HTTPS, whatever the path is. And the path is actually, if you go to the page from the repository, the path is down here in the corner. So if you do git clone, and then preferably the HTTPS address. So uh, HTTPS colon slash slash github.com slash 
the username of your partner over there. So you would, do you have my thing club? Yep. Do you have it? Uh, okay. What is this one? Do you need the planets.get or is it just planets slash? Does it folder. work if you don't have the .get? Yeah, it worked for me. Oh, that's good. Maybe it really, maybe it doesn't check for the user agent. Maybe. And redirects it or something. Okay. Uh, did you have it? It says cloning into lambda repository not found. Why is it? Uh, can you check the address oh, as well? I'm not going to get. So, so, so just to get clone https com slash github.com slash Cody's username. If you if you have it pulled up, no, but I you think you would just yeah, yeah, you stuff. have it here. Uh, you don't have to go in this directory. Just go to the directory without a plants folder, because this creates a plants folder. Make sure it's HTTPS one, not the get one, or not the SSH. It defaults to HTTPS. something magic happens, uh, should now have a folder called planets, which is your partner's repository, cd into it, to, yeah, that command, pretending I'm my own partner for a moment. Um, one thing you can do, prove this isn't your own, you can do git log. And Kevin, you should see that Dracula did it. Uh, Tim, you should see that Michael did it. Wait. I see that Tim did it. Okay, other way around. And Ditya, if you get log in that folder, you should see Cody's name. Are you in the right folder? Or did you do it in the... So the reason I wanted you to go to a different folder uh, was that Git gets really confused if you have a Git repository inside a folder that's also a Git repository. Like that doesn't do what you want almost at pretty much every time. So I don't know if you're in that situation. What folder do you do the Git clone in? Yeah, that's not good. It has to be in a different folder. Because you create a Git repository inside a Git repository. Then. Okay. Um, for the rest of you, Michael, Kevin, just make a commit. Whatever you want to do. The notes have a sample of doing that for. Um, well, change Pluto. You don't have to change Pluto, but
make multiple commits that you will you have fun with this? See it? Do you see code and stuff? Cool. Now add to it, improve on it. Yeah, so or destroy do, it. Or destroy it. Make a commit where you remove every file. That would be a little rude. <laughs> yeah. So in the notes, there's a Pluto that there's editing of Pluto.txt. Um, Actually, I should probably do this from the notes at this point. All right. So have you made a commit? Not yet. Okay. Okay. Remember, if you're going to say insulting things about any of the plant, well, Probably about any of the plants and the people, but um, I'm going to just hold you online. Did you have anything staged that would get at? Maybe you could commit. Change is not staged for concrete. Then you get status. So now, if you do git log uh, one line decorate, so it's telling you not just about branches that you have, but branches on the remotes that you know of. So for the people who did not create the repository, um, you should have one more commit. Your master should be ahead of origin slash master. So, 
that was it. Now we do the yeah. Git log. As you said, if you're just going to pull it from, if you're just going to pull it from GitHub, GitHub, you are above the master. So, so, so I should say, so we'll we'll use use once once he does this, so this is since you ball, so it's origin refers to the same website. So instead of opening up text, once you do git push, then you should be good because then your code should be on the GitHub repository. So then you would need to pull it. And we'll actually upload everything. So you have my. So, Evan, did you get that about the push? Yep. And you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a characteristic of other version control systems. They use a server for everything. Git is not like that. The Git repository in your computer, and the Git repository in GitHub, and the Git repository in your computer are three servers. <laughs> Oh, you'd be able to, oh, with, with, with the older style version controls, you wouldn't be able to use them, you wouldn't be able to use them at all. With Git, you'd be able to see every service that opened. So I can save and do actually, we can just save and pull the code. Normally, when you do the Git commit, it opens up. You could collaborate without the extent. I think it makes sense. We need some means to talk to each other. So we can access this. Okay. Uh, uh, when you do git pull, everything that GitHub is showing you is in the it's, it's, it's so git. So the log, just like, you know, how that's an option. Yeah, the list of commits, the branches. So if you want to do it, you can do it all in one line, or you can get rid of the M and A, which I can print file, and it will open. So you have kind of pull that particular file. Okay. Yep. It looks like Kevin's pushed the file five minutes ago. And if I go into commits, I can see that. I can see the change that he made. Added one line. Nice. Controversial line. If I go into my the Git repository on my computer, as we're talking, and this is all I see. But if I pull from my origin remotes, which is set to the GitHub's address, then I, well, I, I go from this commit to this, which is kind of pointless because it's numbers, um, but the changes are one line added to the TXT. And we're going to git log again, all these changes by Dracula, and then a change by Kevin Hart Creole. And if I wanted to, I could push stuff, we could push stuff, um, and we could pull the changes as they happen. Um, it con if you override the same file, you have a conflict, Git will tell you about this right away. Um, and I don't quite think we have time to go over how you solve that. Um, but that is something that Git will tell you it's going to happen. So, so this is one way to collaborate, to share a repository that you both, or that however many people work on. Uh, this is kind of a classical way of doing collaborations. Um, a way, so let's say you're really annoyed by a book. You're really annoyed that the arrow that Android has and the, for the back button is like missing one pixel. Some stupid pointless thing that is driving me crazy. Maybe it's a spelling mistake in Firefox. Okay? You're not going to have right access. You're not going to be able to put your changes to Firefox's code. Um, they would know where to trust you with that. At least for now. Maybe one of the two of you guys are the Firefox dev. Or Mozilla devs. But, uh, 
in general, uh, open source projects have to have a way of being open to collaboration and still being able to reveal it. So, well, this is actually a strength of GitHub for making that very easy. So, this is another. Um, so, this is a repository on GitHub that I'd like you to go to. Um, that we'll all, we'll all propose changes to it. So pretend it's an open source project and the translations suck. Or you can do some code faster and you want to let them know that. In this case, I'm just going to ask you to add a commit where you add a text file saying who you are. So. Oh, that's, yeah. Oh, I was thinking that this kit can be used in, in like an MNC companies and all if you want to send the data cubes or not. So we use git for that. So the problem, what is, what the is problem is with big data cubes, um, so let, let's say. I've seen on my friends, they will be dealing with all this working and dealing with some company issues and all, and large data cubes they have. It's all information about the branch, about the, their manufacturing products, and the sale, and, and it's a series of data. So, so I get that feeling that uh, on, on a fundamental level, uh, version control systems really only work well with data that you can concisely specify the differences um, between the They, they, they also have to do the sharing and all. Like, you have to give so, your code and then I will be processing and then I will send him and he will be he goes on. So they need to share all those. So and we this, this I don't know, this was not like sharing and all but I don't know this can be used back and used. So, can so, so the thing is I mean let's say let's say in astronomy you have a picture of the sky and then the next version of your of your reduction is the picture of the sky that's been um, background subtracted and you know, some kind of calibration. That difference, you can't really quantify that difference besides the values of every pixel before and after. Um, I mean, you qualify the difference in terms of what you did. But if the version control pro program doesn't have a sense of that, then it can't really tell you anything except that this file got replaced. So this kind of software isn't good for isn't good for big data like that. Um, it isn't good for data. Um, what was something for, for that? I, I forget that name. So, so there are database software that have that, but it's not going to be Yeah. This, this excels in text, but generally things that you can make differences of in a well-designed manner. So SQL is for querying databases. So then they're using a database internally. But it's probably good use for that. Databases are a little more powerful than even that, that use, but Hey Joseph, do we have to be added to this to be able to edit or add a no, file? No, so I am, huh? No, so I am purposely, I don't know you guys, you're random strangers on the internet, um, including myself. The way you would approach this project if you did not, you know, uh, if you did not become a collaborator, if the person did not want you to be a collaborator, but you still want to suggest code changes. Basic operation. That's a weird little glitch. This fork button is one of the most important buttons in all of GitHub. So, or one of the most important operations in all of GitHub. Fork makes a copy of this repository onto your accounts. So, Uh, so Terence will talk about the NumPy library, which is a num uh, Python library for numerical work. And you can do 
I can see. That's not zooming in very well. I'll go slowly. Oh. Okay, you can kind of see it's been forked a lot of times. What forking means, like I said, it's um, making a copy of the repository. It, it predates this, uh, it predates Git. It's the idea that if you don't like the direction a project is going that's open source, you make your own version. Um, Firefox was this for Mozilla. Uh, XOR was this for X386. Um, XEMACs is a fork of Emacs. Uh, these things happen. What would Git? It's become the common first stage thing because it's so easy to fork. So you probably won't get this choice if you do choose your user. And now, instead of having the um, Utilito FizzAS workshop username, you have your own username once you forked it. Okay. Now this one, this is what I would like you to clone. So figure out the address for cloning is right in the box. That's kind of very, can't see much of the address. So I'm not in a uh, Git repository when I clone it. So for everyone, this will be your username. Also, actually, I think I should keep track. There's only one fork so far. So I can tell who, you know, I should see it five or six. Thank you. making a copy of the repository for your user on GitHub. And now we're doing git clone makes another copy on my computer. Now the um the, the way to contribute to things on GitHub, or the convention used by most projects. Let's take a look at, uh, there's only two commits. The convention used by most projects is to start a new branch for whatever you're adding, work on that branch, and then push that to the, um, push that to GitHub. So, you can do git branch and then the name to create it. A shortcut in the notes is that you can create it and check, and check out the branch by using checkout-b. Um, add Joseph. Hopefully with your own names instead of mine. And I'm going to describe myself. Um, I don't know. I am five times. Okay. However, whatever you want to say about yourself. Hopefully more interesting than your heights. I like to do good status to see what I've done. I'll stage the file and then do git commits. Add info for just. I can 
see that Dracula, oh, I forgot, the name is Dracula here. Dracula has that info for Joseph. So does everyone have a commit where they've added a file on, about themselves? Actually, kind of a nice switch, uh, git log stat. Shows you the changes you've made to the files. So now to get GitHub to know, we have to tell it um, what website to use, which defaults to Origin, and then what tag to use, or sorry, what branch to use. Probably different for each person. Okay. And, and hopefully get your the right password. things Git, GitHub does is it has a surprising amount of functionality from the website. So has everyone pushed, um, pushed their branch to GitHub? So your GitHub, your GitHub page, or whether you look at this one uh, for the organization, or you look at it on your repository, it offers to do what's called a pull request. Normally, so on Linux, if I wanted to tell a Linux kernel developer, if I want to tell Linus, hey, make this change, I would take basically this and put it in email form. The kernel uses email. Some other projects use it now, but mostly they use some kind of uh, website interface that integrates with Git or Mercutio, whatever they use. A pull request is basically telling someone, hey, I have this branch, this is interesting, put it in. Maybe I fixed this bug, maybe I've added Russian translations. Maybe um, it was really annoying me that this thing took three clicks to do, and this does it in one click. Or maybe I really need this function for my research, and I keep writing it in my code each time, and it really should be part of this math library. So. Please pull this change. I'll buy you a Coke. Or, you know, something a little more humble. And when you make a pull request, yeah, well, when, you, when, you, when you make a pull request, uh, you can tell it what branches you're merging and what repositories. This is a little weird. For me, it would be a little different because I have the ability to merge. I have write access to this repository. Everyone else probably won't have a merge button. But I'd like people to try. All right, I got to create Cody. I There's two versions. Okay, I mean, I can still, all right, I'll merge Kevin's. And then, merge my own. Are you sure there's another one coming? Should be. Social, okay. 
So here's the thing. Did you add new commits to it? So that one I deleted. And so there should be another one. That was at the same branch. No, one I created on the website, one I created as a branch. Uh, you need to create a pull request on the website. And I did. Twice. Twice. Okay, you closed. You closed the one that you just did. Okay. Okay. So if I was a NumPy developer or a X. Actually, I should probably look at these things before I. Mm -hmm. Cool. I should probably make sure that you're not putting something that would get me in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to this commit log. All right, Tim, I looked at. Oh, that's the one before me. That's the one before Kevin. And, okay. Mine's boring. You want boring. Yeah, okay. Cody's still waiting you to figure it out. If you close your pull request, I don't see anything from you. So now all of us can do git pull. Actually, let's go back to the master branch. Check out master. Git pull. Oh, that is right. We're using, um, it's up to date with the repository on our account on Git. So a way around this to get the one that we, um, to get this repository, we can add this. As someone maintaining a project, it's really easy to take contributions. Actually, that would have been a good one to. Okay, let me revert this. Oh. No. What I want to do is tell you that um, your changes sucked. <laughs> what you can do in a pull request, you can say. Mm -hmm. You can say, I don't like this line and leave a comment just on that line. Um, which is kind of common. It, it's a good thing to have other people review your code. It's actually a popular, somewhat popular way of programming called pair programming, um, where you're not the only eye looking at your code. Um, and this uh, system of doing pull requests really facilitates it, even among the trusted developers, having all of them have to submit a pull, pull request and having your collaborators look at it. Um, it's useful. So you have to get a bit of a, people can't object too strongly before you merge. Okay, so, oh, so then somehow I found myself in Tim's repository. So, if we want in our repository to grab all the changes that happen, um, all the changes that have happened, we have to take this URL and add it as another remote. I'm just going to call it upstream because they're the people you're getting code from to work on. So they're kind of upstream of you. And then I'm going to pull from upstream the master branch. And if I do that, it adds a bunch of files. If I did git log, 
Well, decorates. So, have one for me, merging one from Cody, one from Cody, one for me, merging one from Tim, one from Tim, me merging um, for myself as Dracula, one from Dracula. So yeah, you see this very collaborative history, um, and this also explains why when you look at uh, the Linux Git log. And there's a website interface for this too. A lot of it is people branching out, this looks like a bunch of networking stuff, and being merged. Uh, branching out for the i40e code and merging. Or merging right there for that. Um, so, so a lot of code gets done and other more, potentially more experienced people look over the code and decides to merge it. Um, and that's somewhat what the workflow is like in open source projects with Git. So. Any questions? Okay. So for instance, if anyone would like to make changes to the website, website really. If you'd like to make changes to this website, it's just github.com slash sargus slash that long name. You could clone the repository, commit some or fork the repository, clone it on your local computer, make changes, and do a pull request. Um, there's also nice to cut down the number of steps involved here, there are nice tools by um, uh, GitHub. Makes tools for Windows and for Mac. And I use, well, I use something called Hub. It's really convenient with the um, internet window. Yeah, command line wrapper for GitHub, basically. Has commands like good fork. Just kind of nice. So do everything on GitHub from the command line. Um, yeah. so, any questions? There's a couple more details about things to keep in mind um, when you're putting code or anything else online, um, like whether or not other people can even redistribute it, or the galleries of that, uh, whether or not you give them permission to, um, as well as the like, ethics behind why you should put your work and data online. That is some, there's nothing wrong with using Git for data if the data never changes. It, it, it'll blow up in size bigger than it would end up with other techniques um, if it changes often. And databases are probably more convenient to access it. There's nothing wrong with it.
but I know that you came in the middle of what I need to do to work then. 